Welcome CRM crew, my name is Nick and in today's video I'm going to be discussing some of the best practices to help you as a business get the most from your Zoho CRM system. I've gone over best practices that include how to increase efficiency, how to improve the quality of your data and how to ensure that your users are getting the most from your system as well or your team members as well. So I've gone over a fair few things. I've chaptered each element or each best practice below. So you are more than welcome to skip ahead if you would like to. Um, and finally, if you are signing up for the first time to Zoho CRM, it would be greatly appreciated if you could use my link below. There's one for the EU if you're based in the EU and one for the US if you're based in the US. So that'd be greatly appreciated. It really does help me out. So without further ado, let's get into the first best practice that I'm gonna be discussing in this video. Automate your Zoho CRM system. Take away the workload of your users inside of the system by automating some of the mundane and basic things and jobs that they need to be doing on a daily basis. Of course, as you reduce the number of things that the user needs to do, you're likely to obviously see improved efficiency and less things are gonna be forgotten as well, which is also really, really important because as things start getting forgotten, customer service gets affected, sales success gets affected, and these are two things that we absolutely do not wanna be happening. So if you've got automations in place, that as opposed to the user having to create a task, for example, the system does it automatically based on an action that the user has performed, and then that task can be assigned in a couple of days' time, etc. These are things that are gonna make the lives of the, your users a lot easier, but also reduce the opportunity to make mistakes, the opportunity for things not getting done. Of course, automation will drastically reduce the time cost to your users as well. And as a result, reduce the cost to the business because you're having to do, or your users are having to do a lot less to achieve the same outcome and reduce the cost to their time as well, meaning they can focus on the more important things as opposed to creating these basic tasks and things like that, follow-up emails, etc., that they would otherwise have to do if there was an automation in place. Workflows also allow us to trigger things outside of the system as well. So if you have programmed something which is absolutely possible, based on an action that a user performs inside of the Zoho CRM system, a workflow can be triggered to then go ahead and do something outside of the system. A really good example might be running a credit report or a credit check. So based on an action that the user does inside of the Zoho CRM system, there may be some code that then pushes a credit check to be performed on a specific business or a specific individual inside, and then that information is pulled back and that is entirely automated based on that particular workflow. So you can really start to get very, very clever with the workflows. On a basic level, it's useful creating tasks, emails, phone calls, just follow up information that could otherwise be forgotten about and consequently sales and leads just disappear, things never get acted on. Or, like I said, you can, can get really clever with it as well and start doing some really advanced things. So automating your Zoho CRM system will make a massive, massive difference. Custom modules and fields. Now, unfortunately, like any CRM system, the Zoho CRM system, when coming out of the box, bought brand new, is never gonna fit your business exactly how your business wants to operate. There are gonna be missing data points, but this is where we can go ahead, use the custom modules, and the custom fields to start tracking that data and really build the CRM system to suit your business. Your business needs to have a CRM system that is suited exactly to what you as a business are trying to achieve. And this is the best way we can go about that. So custom modules is where we can go ahead and create new areas in the system. So like we have deals, leads, contacts, accounts, we can have our own custom modules. Let's say memberships, for example, it could be absolutely anything. And then the fields sit inside of the modules, okay? And the fields are the ways in which we can go ahead and track that data. So we can have loads of different field options, whether it be drop down menus, which is lots of different options, or we can have large field boxes. We can have absolutely anything, but creating the opportunity to track this information for your business is absolutely vital. This could genuinely be 
make or break for the success of your Zoho CRM system or any CRM system, if I'm being honest with you. So having the custom areas inside of your system fit your business, really, really important. We absolutely wanna be ensuring that all the data that your business is tracking or needs is being logged inside of the Zoho CRM system. So being able to create the area in which that data sits is really, really important. And you can have loads of different custom modules, loads of different fields as well. So you can really go mad, really specify it down to your business to ensure that you are tracking the data that your business is collecting. And as you build out your custom CRM system with your custom modules and your custom fields, your users will obviously see clear reason why it should be used, why that CRM system is beneficial to them because they are able to track all that information. They can report on information. They can see it in different ways using views and filters. You can do all that even with the custom modules as well. So definitely a best practice to ensure you are getting the best return on investment from your Zoho CRM system. Manage the lead status. Now managing the lead status for me is a little bit of a bugbearer. There is a, a field or an option inside of your leads in your Zoho CRM system where you can manage the status of a particular lead. And because it's not the best way, it's not being implemented by Zoho CRM particularly well, in my opinion, people often forget to use the lead status field, which is bad news because as the leads pile into your system, you struggle to then differentiate between the good leads and the bad leads. And as a result, that data becomes more and more useless because you're not differentiating between the leads you do wanna be seeing and the leads you don't wanna be seeing. So finding the information that you need becomes more difficult. So my recommendation, of course, is to use this lead status field as best as you possibly can. There are so many options available to differentiate between the leads or the, what, what has happened between the, each lead. And you can also go ahead and edit the lead status to manage different lead options if you need to as well to make it specific for your business. But ensure you and your team stay on top of managing the lead status is really, really important. This is literally just a pointer to help ensure that you are maintaining the quality of data. And I know I describe the lead area as a dumping ground, but even in a dumping ground, we wanna keep the data as good as possible because leads is a brilliant, brilliant tool to help us um, keep the data inside of our Zoho CRM system as good as possible. But even with leads, we need to manage those accordingly. So definitely use the lead status button to just ensure that what you are tracking is either good or bad and people know whether it's a good lead or a bad lead, what's going on with that particular lead. I appreciate it's easily forgotten about and that is why it's a best practice in this video. Integrate your Zoho CRM system with other business apps. Often when you integrate apps between your system, your Zoho CRM system and the apps that you're using, it will increase the efficiency. Of course, reducing the duplication that a user might have to do into both systems will be completely eradicated as the data will all be connected like I've already mentioned. The more data connected within all of these different apps gives your users or your team members the opportunity to make better decisions based on the data that they've got available to them. Of course, the more data that has been shared around, the easier it is. There are also other integrations that may not require data to be shared between the different apps. For example, you have notes integrations, DocuSign is another example, things like that. But it's just streamlining the process of using your Zoho CRM system, which is definitely a best practice worth implementing into your Zoho CRM system. Customize the sales pipeline. The final best practice I wanna be talking about in this video is to customize the sales pipeline to suit your business and your sales process. It is so, so important. And a lot of the time it just seems to be forgotten about. Having the sales process unique to the way that your business likes to sell, the products you are selling as well, is really, really important for the users, especially the sales team, to be walking through each stage of that sale to increase or hopefully increase the chances of getting a sale. Now, more often than not, people just seem to use the standard one and then just try and make it fit to what they're doing. But really, you need to go back to basics, strip down that sales pipeline and build it up. And if you don't already have a sales pipeline or a sales strategy that you're using, which some businesses don't, it would be really good if you broke each stage of the sales process down 
on a fundamental basis and then you can go ahead and create it inside of your Zoho CRM system. But work out what you're doing, work out each stage and then you can create certain requirements for each stage of your sale um, and you can ensure that your sales team are doing everything that they need to do for each stage to firstly of course increase the likelihood of getting a sale but also increase their efficiency as well. Getting a sale is brilliant, of course, but we want to make sure that they're getting that sale in the, sh in the shortest amount of time possible, make it quick and effective. So using the sales pipeline or customizing it to, to your business is really important. Now, you can also create multiple sales pipelines. Now, if you have the high enough version of Zoho CRM, I certainly recommend you doing this. If you are selling multiple products, then this is a great way to differentiate your sales pipeline to suit each individual product. And I, I can fully understand why some, some products are gonna have a very, very different sales process to others. And this is how we can differentiate between these. So when you go ahead and create a new deal inside of your Zoho CRM system, you can select which sales pipeline you'd like to use. And of course, you select it for the, the product that you're likely to be selling. So by doing this, you create the perfect sales pipeline with the most chance of getting that particular sale for that particular product. And then the users can walk through each stage and complete the tasks that they need to complete at each stage for that particular product. It just makes things so much better to manage, more efficient, like I said. So that is another best practice that is worth implementing into your business and your Zoho CRM system. Hopefully you have found these best practices useful um, and you are gonna go ahead and implement all of these into your Zoho CRM system to ultimately improve the quality of your data, the efficiency of your team and the likelihood of getting those sales, increasing your revenue, getting the best return on investment from your Zoho CRM system. If you have any questions at all relating to any of these best practices, or you need some help with your Zoho CRM system, please either comment below or drop me an email. My details are in the description below. I am always happy to have a chat, see how I can help, or just answer any questions if you have any. If you've enjoyed this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you could like and possibly even subscribe as, of course, growing the numbers, growing the channel day by day. Um, otherwise, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.